Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today we're breaking down the Crimson Heist update for Rainbow Six Siege and exploring the evolution of this fantastic tactical shooter. Also, the game is free to play until the 24th and is having the biggest sale ever at 75% off, so if you're still not playing this game, now is definitely the time to jump in. Click the link in the video description for more info about the free week and for full patch notes. Also, thanks a lot to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. So first things first, one of the key features of the new Crimson Heist update is the new attacker Flores. He has an explosive drone that controls differently from other drones in the game. Deploying it starts a countdown timer. You can't slow down or reverse the direction once you deploy the drone, but you can turn it. Once the timer hits zero or you manually trigger the explosion, the drone will stick in place for a few seconds. Not only can it stick to walls, but it's also invulnerable for a few seconds before it detonates. When it detonates, it'll take out any equipment in its blast radius and potentially kill hostile operators if they're close enough. This is a pretty exciting gadget because while it opens up opportunities attackers typically don't get, you can both scope out a bomb site and blow up enemy gadgets in the process. To do the same thing with other operators, you'd have to use a regular drone, then find an opening or line of sight to attack from. And like with all gadgets in the game, defenders paying attention can avoid it or disable it pretty easily, but the utility of being able to take out deployable shields or bandit shock wire gadgets can be invaluable for taking down a fortified position without having line of sight. Now, as far as guns go, Flores can either use the AR-33 or the SR-25 for his primary. And while neither gun is new to the game, they're tried and true rifles most Siege players know really well. He also has the stun grenade and claymore as gadget options. On the surface, Flores might not seem like a game-changing addition to the game, but his drone does give players a massive amount of counter utility options. And despite its always moving forward mobility limitation, it is a devastating gadget that could open up new opportunities for big plays when used effectively. I imagine driving this drone and learning how to use it properly is going to have a little bit of a learning curve, but once mastered, I imagine it's going to be quite popular. Now, the next major change for Crimson Heist is an update for the map Border. It's been reworked to tighten up gameplay, particularly on the second floor. Basically, the bomb sites have been slightly expanded and the connecting areas are less chaotic. This is in line with other recent map reworks like the one made to house, which which was a great update. Now, along with the new operator and map, there's also a new gadget that some attackers will be able to use with this update called the GON-6. It's a one-shot explosive projectile weapon that can destroy bulletproof gadgets. However, equipping it replaces your secondary weapon. The GON-6 is one of those question mark gadgets that could potentially shift the meta in a new direction. It's got a lot of utility, but comes at a pretty meaningful cost. Pistols can save you from having to reload and also are great for taking out enemy gadgets without using up primary ammo. Replacing your pistol with the GON-6, especially when you don't have an explosive gadget handy, could give you more opportunities to make really big plays. And the last big change that Crimson Heist makes to Siege is the addition of the match replay beta on PC. For competitive players and events, this is huge. In fact, it's probably one of the single most requested features from the game's competitive community. It lets you replay past matches like you were a live spectator. And being able to replay matches like this is going to open up a whole new way of producing Siege content. Being able to go back and review a match or film alternate angles of a round for a video is really the staple of other competitive games and it's great to see it finally coming to Siege. It's particularly useful for Siege because of just how complex the game can seem at times. Most of the maps have multiple floors and it can be really tough conveying what's going on around without actually being able to show multiple angles. Now, Siege is constantly evolving, especially with the Crimson Heist update. And I'll be the first person to tell you that playing Siege at a competitive level, like any game, means that you have to dedicate a lot of your gaming time to it, which might seem daunting to somebody with a little bit less free time. But something that Siege does really well, especially compared to other competitive games, is an extremely fun, casual experience that helps new players get more comfortable with its competitive side. The casual lobbies for Siege feel really well balanced when compared to other games. It feels like I can play play at my own pace and still have a good time, and it's great for learning the ropes without being destroyed by seasoned veterans. All the new operators that Ubisoft has added over the years have cleverly shifted the meta, keeping things fresh, but the tried and true operators like Ash, Legion, Rook, and Mew all have their place in the game. And it's pretty easy to learn about the new meta and operators without being thrown into the deep end if you've been away from the game for a while. The operators you're familiar with are still totally viable, but there's also a whole new roster of interesting additions to try 
try out. The map reworks also improve and refine the experience, and players that know the maps like the back of their hand are, well, having to relearn some stuff which gives new and returning players a chance to get up to speed without being demolished in the process. The meta of Siege is also constantly shifting as players discover new operator combos and as Ubisoft tweaks their abilities. The Siege experience that veteran players want is always there, but every season offers a facelift to shift the experience that renews and improves the game. I've played a ton of Siege throughout the years, and the constantly evolving experience keeps me coming back. Modern Day Siege is certainly a different beast when compared to the early days, but much for the better thanks to all the seasonal updates and gameplay changes. But it does still feel like riding a bike every time I come back, it's just riding a bike with new bells and whistles. And if you're interested in checking out Siege, use my link in the video description to download it for free today. Don't forget about the 75% off until the 24th, so check it out for free, and if you like it, well, you can get it at a bargain. Again, thank you very much to Ubisoft for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.